This is the plaintiff, Elaine Hatch. She says she was hanging out at the dog park with her dog, Bravo, when another dog owner threw a ball. As Bravo was going to get it, the defendant's dog charged from the other side of the park, attacked Bravo, and bit him on the left eye. There was blood everywhere. She rushed him to the vet, and he needed to get shaved and stitched up. The uncaring, irresponsible defendants refused to reimburse her for the $576.75 in vet bills she's incurred. That's why she's suing. These are the defendants, Wesley and Mary Kinley. Wesley says he and the plaintiff were talking. Then they heard some snarling behind them. Sure enough, their two dogs got into a scuffle. They immediately separated them. There was no blood or injury to either of their dogs. A few days later, the plaintiff is suing them because her dog needed seven stitches? That makes no sense because there was no fight, no injury, nothing. This is obviously a money grab of some sort. They refuse to be taken advantage of by the law likes of the plaintiff and refuse to pay for something that never happened. They're accused of failing to control their dog. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the dog of the plaintiff and her dog were at the dog park when the defendant's dog came up, bit the plaintiff's dog in the eye. But the defendant says there was no injury, period. It's the case of not seeing eye to eye. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Okay, Ms. Hadge, you are suing Mr. and Mrs. Kinley for $576.75 in vet bills that you incurred when their dog bit your dog at a dog park. Correct. Correct. What happened? I was at the dog park on a Sunday night with my dog, and we were just getting ready to leave, and someone else that was there threw the ball for my dog. He ran to get the dog. Wait, someone else who was there threw the ball for your dog, for, my dog. for their dog? No, for my dog walked up to him, and he said, do you want me to throw the ball for you? And my dog sat down, so he threw the ball for him. My dog went to get the, do the ball. And the Kinley's dog was at the other side of the dog park and came charging around and attacked my dog. So I started yelling, and Mr. Kinsley said, is that my dog? I said, yes, he's attacking my dog. So they broke up. My dog came to me. I sat down. I looked at him. He came over, and I said, there's a puncture wound. And he goes, did my dog do that? I said, yes, he did. I said, I'm going to have to take him to Bolton Vet. And then I stopped at the firehouse where my husband was working so he could see the wound. And then I took Are you my the dog. husband? I yes, am. My husband. Okay. And so you stopped there, and what do you do? I wanted him to see the wound, and I called Bolton Vet because it wasn't like a broken leg or anything. And I said, can I make an appointment, an emergency appointment? And they said, come in at 6.30. I said, okay. I explained so to them what had happened. And what did they do? Did they stitch the dogs? They did. They kept him for from 6.30. I picked him up around 10 o'clock that night. They knocked him out, stitched him up, and... Um, he had, was on antibiotics and pain pills for about a week. Okay. Um, what do you folks say happened? Well, the uh, plaintiff and I were actually talking to each other when we heard a snarl behind us. We turned to see what was going on. There was some kind of a dispute over something, so we separated them. I recall at the time asking, had there been a ball involved? Because I didn't see one. It probably was a ball involved. There's balls lying all over the park, and people do throw them. Um, that's what I saw. <laughs> At that time, though, there was no blood. So I'm wondering how does something that is called a puncture and there's no blood require seven stitches? So two dogs at a dog park off leash, one bites the other. Is the one that bit, is that owner responsible for the other dog's vet bill? I would say he is responsible because your dog is your responsibility, so you should have. But they're both off the leash. True. But regardless, the dog's still his responsibility because he's. Are you buying that? Yeah, I mean, if your dog is the one that starts the attack, then you should be responsible for their dog's actions, regardless of whether or not they're the one that started it. Anybody disagree real quick? You go to a dog park so dogs can be rambunctious and be crazy. And if, I mean, it's going to happen. Okay, going inside the courtroom. So, uh, dog had stitches, so we know they're not making that up. So what happened? Just one of those things? Is that your position? What's your position on this? Well, uh, we've been going to the park for a couple of years now. We see that... Uh, Has there the ever been a problem like this before? No. I mean, dogs get in disagreements over toys. Right. But as far as I know, there's never been a suit about it. No, that wasn't my question. The problem wouldn't be a suit. It would be a bite. Has your dog bitten anybody no. or any other animal before? No. no. Have you been back to the dog park? Oh, yes. Even though you know that your dog bit another dog at the dog park? I don't know that that happened. 
Well, how do you suppose? I mean, you saw the scuffle. It's your, like, if not your dog, then who? How did that well, dog we get see seven stitches? We see scuffles all the time. Okay, yeah, except for this is the only scuffle you saw. You saw your dog scuffling with their dog. There are signs all over the dog park that say no aggressive animals. I have now, pictures. the thing that I, I have to ask you is look, you know, everybody. <sighs> I'm a really nervous dog owner. I don't even want another dog to sniff my dog. Um, maybe it's from doing what I do all day long here, but I only see the, uh, the dangerous side of dog contact. So if I'm walking up the street and I'm walking my dog and somebody else has their dog, I'm like, <laughs> I just see no reason to tempt fate. That's just how I run my life. But you still take your dog to the dog park, and that concerns me because you know that in this instance, your dog bit that dog and caused stitches. Like, when, when is it a, on you to not put other people at risk? I'm not sure how to answer that, Your Honor. Dogs get in spats at that park all the time, including mine. Yeah, but, you know, it's not, just because we love a dog, it doesn't mean it's okay if they bite another dog. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. And the dog park rules specifically say aggressive dogs are not permitted in the park. Um, you know, I, I, I guess, you, you know, your argument is, well, I don't think that makes my dog aggressive. Um, you know, and the thing is, you live in a special state. In the state of Connecticut, you're always responsible for dog bites. And there's no assumption of the risk. Other states, you know, I'd be looking at her and saying, hey, uh, you know, you all know what you're doing. This stuff, I've, you know, makes me nervous anyway, because I always think a dog bite is on the verge of happening. Um, so I avoid this kind of thing. But there's, you know, even though the logic of, hey, we're all at a dog park and they're all animals works for me, um, it doesn't work for the state of Connecticut. In the state of Connecticut, you are liable. Your dog bites, you pay damages, period. Your dog bites while your child's in control of the dog, you as the parent pay damages, period. That's how it works here now. So um, you've got the vet bill. It's actually not even an out of control vet bill. I know. Yeah, they said you it know, could have been, been, been more. A lot I worse. I'm finding in your favor in the amount of the five hundred and seventy-six dollars and seventy-five cents. Good luck, folks. Thank you, Your Honor. So the judge finds for the plaintiff, Mr. and Ms. Kindling are on their way out of the courtroom. You know, I never heard any mention of the fact of their approaching you and asking you to help pay for the vet bill. Did they? They did. Uh, some weeks later, after the event. Did you? Did you question? I mean, did you agree to? help out or not? No. Uh, I said I was going to think about it, which meant I was going to call my attorney, which I did, and their advice was don't talk to the plaintiff. Oh. If you, if you want to Suppose it had been the other way around. Would you have asked them to contribute? And do you think... No. They should, you wouldn't? No. No kidding. What no. I'm saying is that dogs bite each other in that park all the time. Yeah, well, it's a regular occurrence. I think you've learned something here. I'm, you're still going to take them to the dog park? I don't see that I have any other options, do I? Yeah, you could walk him without going to the dog park. Oh, how will I socialize my dog? Talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You've lost the case, okay? Right. Very good. Be careful with your pup. All right, here come, comes Mr. Hodge, Ms. Hodge. All right, they, they just weren't, weren't willing to pay, no, right? No, I tried a couple yeah, of times. Because you didn't mention that at all in no, the I court know. case. I tried yeah. to work it out with them, and I didn't want to sue. I wanted to work it out. Yeah. But okay. they were not willing, so well, here we are. You did what you had to do. I did, unfortunately. How's the dog? He's very good, thank you. That's important, yes. too. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Harvey? Yeah. So Connecticut's a strict liability state, which means the defendant's automatically liable. But in other states, um, you have to show negligence. And this lady's right. If two dogs are playing and they get rambunctious, that's what dogs do. There's no negligence, and there is no liability.